All right, hello everybody. So the next steps in our diesel hydronic heating system are going to be unraveled, literally, uh, in, in this video. <laughs> So we need to take a closer look at this heating unit and all of its various ports because there aren't just the glyco pipes and fuel lines coming out of this, there's also electrical ports and once this heater is installed, there's going to be a lot of tentacles coming out of it and we need to know what they are, do we need them, why do we need them and most importantly, how do they all connect together? The tricky part with any system is that there are actually multiple ways that you can um, connect things for, to do different stuff or slightly different stuff or even do the same thing but you have to know what you're touching before you do anything. So after spending some considerable time looking at uh, all the different ports, the wiring and the, the pipes that have to come through here, we thought that uh, we'll uh, sit down and lead you through it and make sure that we have consolidated all of our nodes before we commit to drilling the holes in the van. So we're going to show you what the pipes coming out of uh, this unit are and the wiring. All um, of the pre-wiring that we know where it all connects to so we understand it ready for when we install it. Yeah, so um, let's give you a close look then. So this here is our S-Bar D5E hydronic heater furnace. This is the actual furnace that's going to be mounted on the outside of the van and is going to be burning the diesel. And on it we have lots of different connection points that we need to connect up to different areas. So first of all, on the top, we've got two connection ports on the top. Now these are for the actual glycol going into the furnace and coming out to the furnace. They are going to run up into the van. And then if we rotate it round, this is the area where it gets quite busy. We've got seven different connection ports on the bottom that we have to connect up. We've got the biggest one here, which is the exhaust pipe. Then we've got a slightly smaller one, which is the air intake. We've got a tiny one here, which is for the diesel fuel line. And then we've got three different shaped black connectors on the end, which are all for the electrical wires. So firstly, the connections on the top, these two here that control the glyco coming in and coming out. In the kit, we got a selection. Either we can use straight tubing or we can use a 90 degree right angle tubing. And they just fit directly into the hole there, like so. So we can either use a 90 degree or we can use a straight one, depending on what we need. Um, and then once they're in place, we've got a nice little cap that can cap it off like so. So there, all the wiring under here is protected. And also this cap actually has in and out arrows on it. So you know which way goes in and which way goes out, which is kind of helpful because we need to know that. Okay, so next up we've got the exhaust, which is this contraption here. Now the exhaust has to go on the outside of the vehicle connected to the furnace and its main job is to get the exhaust gases that this produces from the furnace away because it produces CO2 and you don't want that near you because it's going to poison you. Now the exhaust port on the bottom of the furnace is this biggest circle port here made of metal. And to connect the pipe onto the port all we have to do is get one of these clips that comes with the kit. We'll put it on the end and then all you do is tighten this with a ratchet so that this can't come off. So then once that's connected on there we can bend this wherever we like under the van depending on where there's space to mount it. So we can bend this in any direction that we like and we connect the exhaust pipe onto the silencer using another one of these. So we connect that again just like the same and we'll tighten that down. And we can do the same on the other side of the silencer with this shorter piece of exhaust with the tip on the end. Come on, there we go. Finally. And yeah, we'll clamp that down as well. Now you might be wondering how to mount this thing to the underneath of the van since there's no connection points. Well, we've got a small bracket that came in the kit which connects to the silencer using the aforementioned pile of bolts and screws. So we basically bolt it onto the silencer here and then we can use the other end of the bracket to bolt it somewhere underneath the chassis, basically somewhere that we can mount it. Any piece of metal under the van will do. And then to mount the other half of the exhaust pipe, we've got one of these spring brackets here, which will clamp together, put a bolt through and you attach that on the outside of the van as well. 
again, same as the uh, silencer clamp. So yeah, you'll put a bolt through that and you'll put it about halfway just so it gets there and there are your mounting points. And obviously the furnace is mounted as well. If we feel like we need more of those kind of spring clamps to support other areas, then we'll just have to get more because it only came with one. So along with the exhaust, we've also got the air intake for the furnace since the furnace needs air to operate. On the underneath of the heater, so the big one was for the exhaust and the smaller round metal port is for the air intake. You can't get them mixed up since they are different sizes, but the smaller round one is the air intake. So the air intake is this black tubing here with an air filter on the end of it, and it comes with its own Jubilee clamp clip to attach onto the furnace. So this air intake, like the exhaust, can bend however we need it to, to attach to the van. Put the Jubilee clamp on the end of the clip, and then this attaches onto that round port like so like that and then we'll tighten down the jubilee clamp so in order to mount this air so in order to mount this shush <laughs> so in order to mount this air intake they didn't actually give us any metal clips or anything so we're just going to have to use zip ties and attach it wherever we can on the underneath of the van zip ties will be strong enough this is not heavy and it's not hot either unlike the exhaust so that's the air intake the exhaust and the top glycol pipes Four ports down, four more to go. We need to get the fuel system out next. No. Now, when it comes to the fuel system, depending on where your fuel tank is and if you're connecting it to the van's fuel tank, your own fuel tank, and whether that fuel tank's gonna be inside the van or outside, really influences where this fuel line is gonna go. It could stay completely on the outside of the van or it could come up through the floor to the inside. Now we'll get into our different fuel tank options in a later video, but we have read all your comments, so thank you very much for that. So on the furnace, the fuel port is the smallest line coming out at the bottom. This tiny little port here at the bottom is for the fuel. And this blue hose here is the fuel line that we got. It's a two mil fuel line. Now how you connect this to that is with one of these. Now how we connect one of these rubber hoses to that port there is with these tiny Jubilee clips. So this Jubilee clip goes on top of the rubber like that. And then we connect this whole thing and wedge it on top of the port. Now I'm not gonna do it because if I do it now, I'm not gonna be able to get it off. But that wedges on there and then we tighten down the Jubilee clip. And then on the other end, we put another Jubilee clip on so essentially that will go in there and then the fuel line will come out and go wherever it needs to go. So we have the fuel line coming out there. Then we've got our fuel pump, which if you look here, it says that the fuel should go this way. So the fuel line will come down through the pump and then it will connect to this, which will dip into the tank. So that has its own rubber connection and Jubilee clamps. So the fuel line will come out the tank, through here, through the pump, get pumped and in to the furnace. Now along with this system we also ordered a very small fuel filter for this and this filter fits between the tank and the pump obviously to filter the fuel before it gets to the pump. So yeah this filter will fit on the same way with these rubber connections and jubilee clamps between the tank and the pump but we're waiting on these parts because this was an extra in our kit and we don't actually have the rubber connections for it. But that is the fuel line going into the furnace. Right, so that was all the plumbing ports on the bottom and on the top. And now we come to these three ports, which is the wiring. Now this took us a while to figure out because we had to sift through all their wiring diagrams which are not easy to decipher because as it turns out you can connect this heater to lots of different types of air matrices and controllers and each of those have to have special ports or optional wires to be able to connect old systems, new systems, the system that we've bought and they don't make a nice wiring diagram for every combination possible. So you kind of have to figure it out yourself and it took us quite a few phone calls, but we got there. So on the bottom of the glycol furnace, we've got three electrical connection points. This one here is the power point. This one here with three connection points is the glycol pump. And this one here with I think six connection points is everything else. 
So the easiest one to start with is this one here, which is the glycol pump line. So that one is a completely separate wiring loom from that. This is the glycol pump line wiring. We've got a purple and red wire, a purple wire, and a brown wire. And this port connects into the three pin connection port here on the side. And then on the other end, we connect this into, this is our glycol pump here. And on the side, there's a little connection port. We'll be able to connect that in there and it will click. So that's the glycol pump all wired up and connected. We can move that out of the way. So the remaining two ports on the furnace are all connected to one wiring loom, which is this here. So the two ports are right here on the end. We've got one with the brown and the red cable on. This is our power cable. And then the other connection point with one, two, three, four, five, six different colored wires on, this is for everything else that runs in the heater. So we can plug the power cable here in the top, like that. And then the other cable can go in the bottom. So there we are, that's the three connected. The power, the glyco pump, and everything else. So coming off this wiring loom, the first thing that comes off is this wire here. Now this wire is to the fuel pump. So we've got six meters of it, and this goes to the fuel pump. So if we grab the fuel pump, we need a special connection point to connect these wires into this little black connection here. So we've got this little black piece of connector which came in the kit. So we put the two green wires in this side and then we connect this side to the fuel pump like that. I'm not gonna push them all the way in at the moment because I don't know if I'll be able to get them out afterwards. So that's the fuel pump so we can move that out of the way. So the remaining wire actually comes down and splits off into two main sections. We've got this section here, which goes one way, there. And maybe we've got this section here, which goes the other way. By the way, all of this wiring needs to come out the furnace and then come inside. The only exception might be the fuel pump, depending on where you mount your fuel tank. So with that in mind, with this pathway that comes down here, we've got three ends that these connect to. The first one with four wires with a connection point on top. This here is a diagnostic plug. So this is somewhere which Eberspreker can tap into if there's a problem with the furnace. So this plug needs to be somewhere accessible in case there's something that you need to fix on your heater. Then also on this side, we've got these two cables. One is coated in a black coating, but is actually red underneath. And then the other one is a brown cable. These both lead to independent eyelets. The brown one goes to the fuse box negative. So our van's fuse box. And this black one goes to the van's fuse box positive. So this is the power for the furnace and anything else that's connected to the furnace. This is what will power it. And then the third part on this side is this fuse box. Now, if I untangle this, we can see where all the wires connect to. So from the fuse box positive, which is this black wire, it comes here. See what I mean by that? It's red underneath. It comes here and splits off into three separate power wires running into this fuse box holder. And then at the other side, we have a thick red wire, a thin red wire, and then a thicker white and red wire. Now these three wires are power for three different things. The thicker red wire runs all the way back through the wiring harness and comes out here. This is the thicker red wire that goes in to power the furnace. So this first fuse on the fuse holder is the fuse for the actual furnace itself. The thinner red wire runs all the way through the wiring harness and then at this junction comes down the other way and goes to the other side and actually comes out over here. But we'll explain about that in a minute. And then the third wire, the white and red one, does exactly the same thing. Runs back through this wiring harness, at this junction comes off, and runs that way. And those other two fuses will be where this wire connects to. So let's have a look on that side and see where they go. So on the other side of the wiring harness, we have this, which splits into three separate areas. So the first area is with a black and red thin cable and then that white and red cable from the other side on the fuse box. Now these two, they don't join together even though it looks like they do under here. These two are separate and these are optional 
depending on what type of air matrix you have and whether you want to use it with the furnace or whether you want to wire it in separately. They're here if you want to use them or if your air matrix requires it to be used because some air matrixes I think have to be connected to the hydronic heater or if you want to for example use your air matrix over Bluetooth connecting to the furnace I think you can do that with Eberspreker but that's what these wires are for. So the next three wires that poke out are these tiny yellow, brown and red wires. Now these wires are used for an older type of controller. So we've got the Eberspreker Easy Start Pro controller which uses a separate connection but I think if you just want to use a simple switch to like turn it on or off then you can use these three wires and wire that up. Or some other types of controllers, not Eberspreker specific controllers, you can use this. But since we have an Eberspreker controller, we don't need to use these wires. And then the only remaining one is in this black loom that comes out here in the end. And it has four wires on it. Red, brown, black and blue, and black and red. And this connects to the Easy Start Pro controller. So this is the Easy Start Pro controller. And out of that, we have two connections. The one with the four pin port connects directly into the one coming out the wiring loom from the furnace. I'll just be able to connect those together. So now we've got power and controls going to the controller. And then out the controller we've also got three more wires running to an optional temperature sensor if we had one. This can connect to a temperature sensor in the van if we wanted to. Now we're going to do a completely separate video on how to wire up our air matrix controller because it's quite complicated and it's different for each type of air matrix and controller that you get. So we're going to do a different video on that because it's not connected to the hydronic heater. So yeah. Oh, there's one more thing. I knew I was forgetting something. This came with our kit. What this is used for, again, it's used for an air matrix. So if you want to set up a relay, so I think you can connect it to a phone or Bluetooth, then you would use this and connect it to this cabling here, the red and white and the black and red. But we're not going to do that. But that's what this is here for. And that is the wiring for the Eberspreker Hydronic D5E heater, 12 volt diesel as far as we can tell. So that's all the heaters, units, ports described and unless anything else comes up, next week we should be drilling some holes in the van and mounting it. Oh please, please I want heat in here. So if you have any questions or tips please leave them down in the comments below and we'll catch you next time. Now I have to pack this away.